seven, guys. And there's a reward for putting yourself out this weekend, right? You're gonna make a new friend. It's hard. It is hard to put yourself out sometimes. But if you do it, there's going to be a blessing on the other side of that. That's right. So welcome to Keto Palooza 2023. Yay! We're so excited about this. Listen, we tell people, people ask us what conference we go to. This is the one conference don't ever miss. Yeah. We are all about community, and Autumn has just put together this amazing thing where you get speakers, you get education, but you get to us what is the most important thing, which is community, which is why for the last year you've heard us encouraging you to be here. Yeah. And, or, Were we lying? Or is this awesome? This is awesome. This is awesome. This is awesome. We really want you to get something out of it. And today, we're going to change things up a little bit. A lot of times, we just get up here and kind of go rah rah. But we want to talk about how you can have a really successful keto journey. Yeah, and if you don't know us, you can find us on social media. Um, two crazy ketos and two crazy campers because once we lost all the weight, we're like, well, what are we gonna do now? Like, just be like, all right, cool, I'm smaller than I used to be. Uh, so we got out and we're living our life and so we're in uh, both of those channels. And of course, we have to have a little disclaimer, Joe. We are not doctors and nurses. I know, I totally look like the doctor part here, but no, we're not. I I'm a five-year-old on the inside, truly, okay? Nobody knew that. Nobody guessed that. But we're not from another planet in the means of like, whatever your goals are, like it's not a case of like, well, they must be from another planet or, or be a different person. Like they've achieved success, but sometimes we can feel like that, right? Like there's somebody that's not like me in some way. And when you first blast off on, the, on your keto journey, success can feel like it's light years away. Like, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Yeah, I know when I first got started on keto, it was just like, if I can lose 10 pounds, I'll be really happy. Like, I never thought about getting down to 190 pounds. I never thought that I could be successful because I've tried every diet in the world. I mean, we even created a few on our own. Like right. the Progresso Soup Diet. We did the ramen noodle diet. Yeah. I mean, you name it, we tried it, and so I was never successful. What you need to do is you need to decide what is most important to you right now, and then set a course on that. And you know, we'll get coaching clients that will call us up and they'll say, like, well, what do you want to accomplish? I want all of this, you know, I want one thing. What is the most important thing that you want to focus on? If you tell me, well, hey, I just need to get my body healthy. My A1C is a 7.8. And we were talking to someone last night that their A1C was like a 6.7 and three months later it was a 4.9. Like, how do you do that? Because as far as I know, I'm talking to Dr. Barry, there's no medication on the planet that can do that. Yeah. Right? That. So, I mean, that is like to us amazing, but you need to figure out what is the most important. And I'm gonna give you a little hint. Keto's not a weight loss diet. It's not a weight loss diet. Weight loss is a side effect of eating keto, but keto is a health optimization lifestyle. Okay, first of all, get rid of the word diet, because the diet indicates an end. A diet means like, you know, think about it, even subconsciously, oh, I'm going on a diet. Well, that means you're gonna end at some point. Hopefully you don't end your keto lifestyle, but it's a health optimization lifestyle, and then the weight loss will be a side effect. So. Hopefully our number one thing is, is I want to optimize my health. I want to get off of medication. I want to not have to use a wheelchair anymore. Yeah. You know, I want to be 52 years old and become a scuba instructor. You know, there's different things that you can do, but there are what was the most important thing and that's what we're going to focus on right now. Because despite your best efforts, we're not going to conquer the galaxy in a day. Pick like, I'd be like, she'd be like, oh, whatever, whatever, like a, uh, chicken Caesar salad. She'd pick like two pieces of chicken off. Or like really five grams of protein. And then at the end of her day, she'd eat like 20 grams of protein. I test her keto level, and she's in ketosis, it's great. But her, she was very protein deficient. Hair starts to fall out, skin, nails start to become normal. We need to embrace that. Um, and then get your steps in. Aim for eight to 10,000 steps per day. Right? This would be an incredible five fit for an anti aging solution. So I want to show you really quick because I like to throw some new data at you, things that you may have never seen before. Um, so I'm gonna show you some new studies that have recently come out. Um, this was actually a case study from our lab. We haven't published this yet. 
uh, where we actually gave tamarans as exogenous ketones to an individual who had Parkinson's disease for over 20 years. And so we have a uh, testing device at our lab where we can track and improve the number of targets that we're able to measure, right? Very quickly demonstrating that it's a fuel issue for this individual, right? And so they've since been on a ketogenic diet and are doing incredibly well, a very low tremors. Um, so it's great, it's a case study, but uh, it's something to progress the field forward. This is my beautiful mom, uh, and Sam. Uh, I did my entire dissertation dedicated to my mom. And this was the study that I published out of my dissertation from that. It was the effects of exogenous ketones on biomarkers of Crohn's disease. So what we did is, uh, my mom lived in New Jersey, said, mom, I need your help. She's like, what's that, honey? I'm like, I need to move you down to Tampa. She's like, <laughs> so, I love my mom and dad. I moved her down to Tampa. Uh, and I said, I need you to get my guinea pig for my dissertation. And her Crohn's was at an all time high. It was horrible. She couldn't eat anything without a bathroom being within 200 feet, right? Like, it was, it was tough. And that's tough to watch as a son, to watch your mom, the person you care about, the, one of the people that you care about the most in the world, to go through that type of pain. Um, and so I was like, I, I need to solve this. I need to figure it out. And so what we did was we had my mom, we put her on a lower carbohydrate diet. It wasn't necessarily a ketogenic diet, but lower carbohydrate diet. Um, we had her walk 5,000 steps a day, uh, and I gave her exogenous ketones daily. So we looked at C-reactive protein, which we all know the marker of inflammation. So the normal ranges were from zero to four. Uh, she was close to 60 um, when we first started ton of inflammation going on, and within three months, we got her back down to the normal range, and she's been that way for 12 years now. Um, this study looked at a very low-calorie ketogenic diet and a hypochloric balanced diet, so like a balanced diet, same calories. Um, and they looked at episodes of migraines, right? Who's seen data with like ketones and migraines, right? Yeah, some people, but there's data on that. So they looked at migraine days and people who had severe migraines, very low carb ketogenic diet, significantly decreased prevalence of migraines, right? So super, super beneficial for the brain. And so I wanna wrap up with this. Uh, together, we'll help improve health and longevity of the world. I wanna close this gap. And it's not just gonna be me, it's gonna be everyone in this room extending this and beyond, it's people we care about. Because this is a big problem. It's only getting worse, and we need to figure out how to solve it. I'll say this, I would trade everything, every single thing I have, even Scoop, I love that kid to death, I would trade everything I have for one more album of my brain. The future's bright, and I know if you look on social media, or you look on the news, I don't watch the news anymore, but if you look on the news, you would see a different picture. I, I see a very promising picture um, in terms of what this metabolic state can do for the health of the country. Not just the U.S., but worldwide. Uh, we all, I think, just have an obligation to step up leading and help our friends and family with this. Hey, we were just talking about Tennessee. Those two, they were bothering me. That's their fault. I meant Tennessee. Okay. <laughs> right? They don't listen, right? Okay, well, I can keep talking. Be inspired to change your family's life. Here, I just like Boys. How long have you been keto? Who's been keto for longer than five years? Raise your hand. Long Spreading the message of metabolic health. Uh, we were talking during our uh, lunch break about the importance of having more metabolic docs out there preaching this message. And I've seen miracles happen in my practice. Um, you go from a disease manager to a doctor who knows how to help people heal and reverse disease. It's very humbling. If only I knew this like years ago, I probably would have done a better job of helping more people. So happy to be here. All of that, all those accolades and training laid the foundation rather than the obesity training, the nutrition, functional medicine. Functional medicine is all about what's the root cause of why we get sick in the first place. And guess what? They don't teach doctors that. 
it just don't. So you guys kind of know it. I'm preaching to the choir, but many people don't understand that. So let's let's get started. Uh, full disclosure. Yes, I'm mostly carnivore. Like so many people kind of start in this low carb space and they transition because they realize that you've heard our previous speakers. Uh, protein is important. So important that if you just ate that, you would be okay. But my wife forces me to be keto for it sometimes. She makes <laughs> very nice vegetables every once in a while. And I only eat the ones that don't cause pain to my gut. So, <laughs> so you know, so. <laughs> I always embarrass her every time we do this stuff. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, what happens when a patient comes to see a doctor. And as a metabolic health doc, I've changed my approach. And you know, I, you know, we did. We went to um, a Brazilian restaurant last night. You know, a few blocks away. And as we walked there, there was a very nice young lady who said, do you guys need help? And I was like, you know, I'm not in Chicago, so I know it's not as, you know, it will be a little nicer maybe here. And I couldn't believe it, so she's an ambassador. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but they have yeah. ambassadors here walking around, helping you on a bicycle or uh, walking around. And I just couldn't, it just felt so good that, you know, once you, you know, you, you realize you didn't need anything, didn't want anything, it was so nice to have somebody to be an ambassador. So imagine if healthcare was that way. If you walked into a building, just like a Walmart reader, and they were there to help guide you through your healthcare journey. And that's what I try to do as a physician. That's what I want all clinicians, whether you're a pharmacist, nurse, uh, nurse practitioner, et cetera. So, but, but when people come see you, they, they want you to do more than just that. They want you to actually like solve the problem, right? So, knowing how to solve their problem, not just by giving them a prescription or some procedure or surgery, but how do you help you live longer, as one of our Dr. Brian was saying, how do I live longer to be here with my family? Because I don't want to lose those years of life. One of the things I've learned as I've walked with my wife, that was a type one diabetic. The average type one diabetic uh, has an average A1C of 8.6. And they, they lose 12 years of life on average because they have an A1C of 8.6. But then you have these great groups like Type 1 Grid, Dr. Bernstein, and others who have taught us that you can actually have an A1C of 5.6 or lower and regain those years. So part of why I'm standing on the stage is to walk with you, walk with my wife, and of course, my patients, to help them understand you don't have to give up 12 years of life ever. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So if you got somebody in front of you, you're talking about keto and you didn't address their trauma, may not work for so, It's not all about how you look, but it's really hard to show how you feel in a slideshow, right? Because the significant effect of resistance training on muscle strength was found to occur even in 80 plus year olds in studies. So even in your 80s, you can improve the quality of your muscle. Well, you may or may not, you still can add muscle. But it's not quite as important in your later decades to add muscle as to make sure the muscle you have is healthy. And you can't have healthy muscle if you're very sedentary and you don't resistance train. So I wanna talk about the win-win here. So my whole talk has been, don't worry about the weight, right? Sort of, we've been in there, right? Like don't worry so much about the weight, it's not a big deal, it's just a win. But the win-win is, um, okay, let's talk about dating for a second. I know we're going on a little tangent. But let's say you wanna meet somebody. Like kind of the worst way to meet somebody is on the first date, be like, I love you, let's get married. <laughs> it's not gonna go well, right? It's, you find love when you're not looking for it. But that actually means you find love when you're not being like weird, obsessive, and stalkery. And some of you are weird, obsessive, and stalkery about your weight, right? I mean, let's just be real. And sometimes if you take your eye off of that, and you focus on all of the other things it takes to be a healthy, happy, well-rounded, not dying kind of person with good health and, and, and a body that doesn't hurt all the time. The win-win is, well, you're not chopping down the tree, right? You're not, you're not like, I'm just never gonna wanna lose. You can still want to lose weight, but you can't put all your focus there because you are a, you are a forest, my friend. You are all the trees. You're not just one. 
The win-win here, though, is probably by putting your attention on being more active, being healthier, fixing metabolic markers, working on your sleep, working on your stress level, you will probably lose weight. So I'm advocating not to give up on a goal, but to put it in its proper perspective. So rather than give a verbose and multi-articulated presentation today, <laughs> I thought I might do what seems to help people the most in many cases. I might just take questions from you guys. Because very often, when you discover a proper human diet, you're like, oh, I got this. Okay, good. No, this is easy. But then there's that one little hang up. And you're like, yep yeah, it. You know what a yep yeah, it is? <laughs> yeah, but, but, right. And so that's, that's where the, the questions and answers, I think that really helps people. Because they just got that one thing, and if they knew the answer to that, booyah, full steam ahead. And so uh, we're going to do that. Uh, first of all, let me just tell you a, just a brief little thing. On the very first low carb cruise, when Nisha and I were just getting into speaking and traveling and talking about this thing, we were sitting after the presentation and we were talking with a couple of other influencers, doctors, and out of my mouth tumbled the phrase, proper human diet. And Nisha went, ooh, that's good. <laughs> Mark that down right there, don't forget that. And so that just literally tumbled out of my mouth as many things do. And, that's, and, and so that's kind of become the, the mantra of what we're trying to do because I think that if you want a dog to be as healthy as a dog can possibly be, you feed them a proper canine diet. And to the degree to which you don't feed them a proper canine diet, their health will suffer. The more poison you give that dog, the sicker that dog will become. And I think that's probably an underlying principle of all mammalian biology. Every mammal for sure an animal probably on the planet that's a that's a bedrock principle when you take your dog to the vet and the dog is sick the first question the vet asks what do you feed this dog as if that's important but yet when you go to the doctor and you're not feeling your best how often is that the first question out of your doctor's mouth never seldom that probably shouldn't be that way because we like to think that we're, we're special, we're different, magical, but we're mammals. And so what are you feeding this mammal? That is a valid question anytime a human goes to the doctor as well. So keep that in mind. I think that's very important. And some of us think we're magical in that, and this, this may or may not apply to you. So listen carefully and see if you can figure out if this applies to you or not. So humans are fascinating creatures. We're so fascinating. We're the most ignorant geniuses <laughs> on the planet. We're capable of such beautiful things and then just the dumbest shit you've ever heard or seen in your life. It's like, how can you do both? Sometimes simultaneously, right? So there's this thing where people can, they feel like that they know about keto, carnivore, and they, they do do it sometimes, but not all the time, sometimes. And, but their, their health is just not responding to them knowing about a proper human diet. And only you know whether this applies to you or not. Just knowing the solution, but not applying the solution daily, strictly, repetitively, thoughtlessly, it just becomes a habit you don't even think about. It. 
It's like if there's a cow in the pasture, and then one day the cow's like, I've got an upset stomach, I don't know why. I found all these Skittles in the barn and I ate them. <laughs> why do you think my insulin's high, Dr. Barry? Well, did you eat grass? Well, no. Okay. So just because you know about keto, just because you know about carnivore, just because you watch some videos, just because you come to keto carnivore proper human diet conferences, this thing doesn't work by osmosis. You actually have to apply the principles and apply them daily and make them part of your daily habitual pattern that you just thoughtlessly do each and every day. So just because I see you at every keto conference does not, there's, there's still not necessarily a mystery as to why keto is not working for you. You know me, I, don't, I, I like to beat around the bush, I'm very sure. So, um, with that being said, I am, I'm ready to take some questions if anybody's now brave enough to stand up and ask me a question. <laughs> Are you guys ready? I'm ready.